A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive part 11, making the expansion joint to secure the boiler to the frames. Originally, the mounting did not allow for any movement once the boiler was bolted in place. The first attempt, as shown in the last episode, was a definite fail, as I thought it would be. In this video, I show an alternative arrangement that is much better. It is Tuesday the 27th of December 2022, and very shortly it's my turn to make a Christmas dinner for the family. I spent quite a lot of time yesterday preparing a kit of parts to make the dinner. Here's a food container full of Brussels sprouts. I think I bought too many packs. This is the emergency Brussels sprouts survival kit. Excluding the large volume of potatoes yet to prepare, here are the rest. Carrots, green beans, parsnips to make into a puree, cauliflower, and even more cauliflower and broccoli in the other container. And of course, at the top are the sprouts. On now with the job in the workshop. In this clip, I'm having a think about the best way to make some sliding fittings to allow the boiler to expand when it gets hot. This is the underside view, and I'm just holding a piece of bar in place to have a look at it. Here's a view from above, and as you can see, the bar has to be of such a diameter that it doesn't fall through the slot. I'll machine part of it to go through the slot and support the boiler. Over now to my Boxford lathe and I'm going to make a mock-up of the part. Which is often a good idea to get the feel of what you need to do the job. As I'm making this I can already see problems. Once I turned it to the right size, I centre drilled the end of it and then I drilled the end of it, tapping size for M6. Why M6? Well they'll go through the holes in the boiler plate and I have a supply of them. As I was making this component, I realised it had shortcomings from a design point of view. But I carried on anyway. I squirted some cutting lubricant into the hole, and under power, using back gear, I threaded the hole M6. One of the reasons I like these hand-operated chucks in the tailstock is they don't grip quite as tightly as the ones that use keys, so you can actually get away with it if the tap bottoms in the hole, it will spin in the chuck which is a great alternative to snapping off in the hole. Here I'm checking the fit of the M6 bolt and it's fine. As I'm making this component though, I can see the problem. I would need to make four of these, and as I tighten the M6 bolts, the entire thing would rotate. I'll part off the component and have a look at it in detail. What you see in this clip is after the parting off operation. When I loosely fit the component in position, you can see the problem. I drilled the hole all the way through, and you can see in this clip that it is also threaded. I suppose I could fit another M6 Allen caphead bolt, but I think I have a better idea. I have quite a few of these stainless steel bolts. They are M10 size, and I think they're ideal for the job. All I need to do is make some fittings for the bolts, chop the bolts to length, turn the end and thread them to take the M6 Allen caphead bolts. What I need to do is to make four outer sleeves, thread them in the middle, M10. That will allow the M10 bolts to screw into these fittings. And once the M10 bolts are shortened, I can drill and thread them M6 to accept the short M6 caphead bolts. Here you can see me cleaning the tap with a paintbrush after the threading operation and now I have a really nice M10 thread in the hole in the centre of the bar. All I need to do is make four of these. Here I'm parting off the first one. I'm parting each of these off slightly longer than I need them and I can turn them round in the chuck and turn them to the final size. You can see here why I do that. My parting tool parts off OK but doesn't leave the best finish. The parted off bit is in the chip tray and here I'm starting the process of making the second of these collars. The sequence is identical for all four and I drilled the hole in the centre of the piece of bar quite deeply to start with. I've increased the video speed on these clips just to get through it quicker. You may be wondering how do I know where to part off these components? The first one is slightly longer than I need it to be and I use that as a template to set the parting tool position for the rest. There goes another one into the chip tray. 
Before continuing, I need to drill the hole a little bit deeper. Then I can continue with the tapping operation. First of all though, I think some lubrication is in order. This allows the tap to cut smoothly and I get a much better finish on the threads. This is a bit of a mass production job on a very small scale. It's important to mention that the pattern I'm using for setting the parting tool is always the first one that I made. And by doing it this way, all of the parts should be just about the same size. I think it's time to mention that this is not a precision part and I am not a precision engineer. I am an ex-professional musician. For many years I've owned a recording studio and that's what I've done. I never had any aspirations to sit at a machine tool. I am aware that a lot of people like machine tool work, but I don't. It is a necessary evil. I always make videos with beginners in mind and my mentor many years ago was a man who wrote in the model engineer under the pen name of LBSC. And he wasn't trained either. I think he used to wash boilers out on steam locomotives on the London Brighton South Coast Railway. Hence the pen name of LBSC. This next clip shows two of the parts in position. And in case there were any dimensional errors on the bracket, I numbered the parts, but really they're all interchangeable, so that's good. As you can see in this clip, the collars are all very slightly too long. I've marked these two with a felt tip pen which tells me where to cut to. I would like to say to the man who wrote in, and I'm not being nasty, but I do not have any letters after my name. Oh yes, sorry, I forgot I do. I have BA brackets, STARD close brackets. I really don't know why people who have letters after their name in a subject or people who are professional precision engineers bother writing in to tell me how to do the jobs. It makes me wonder why these types of people watch videos that are clearly made for beginners. The thing is, it's all down to basic intelligence. With my machinist hat firmly in place, I do realise that this is not the best way to drill a hole down the end of a stainless steel bolt. I'm doing it this way just to prove the concept. In the next video I will show a far more accurate way of doing this. Also in the next video I will show the parts fully machined and fully assembled, followed by the exciting part of refitting these brackets to the frames. For now though I have to go. All the food I showed at the beginning of this video does actually need cooking for the Christmas lunch later today. I do hope that you're all enjoying the holidays and all I have to say is stay safe, stay healthy, Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.